Hey guys, how's it going? It's Erwin back here with another video today on my YouTube channel. For today's video, I want to talk about the recent NBA Finals that were just completed on Monday, June 12th, where the Denver Nuggets defeated the Miami Heat 4-1 in the NBA Finals, with Nikola Jokic being named the most valuable player for the series. Now obviously, I didn't have a YouTube channel at the time before the playoffs started, but uh, for my prediction before the playoffs started, I predicted the Denver Nuggets would meet the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA Finals. Now obviously, <laughs> the Milwaukee Bucks got knocked out by Miami in the first round, but the Denver Nuggets made it all the way to the NBA Finals and won it, which to me was just no surprise, contrary to popular belief in my opinion. It really felt to me that coming into the playoffs, a lot of people disrespected the Denver Nuggets from the start. Um, there was, I think there was a poll done and it was 60 percent to 40 percent expecting the Nuggets to beat the Timberwolves in the first round. There was genuinely people out there that thought the Nuggets would potentially lose the Minnesota Timberwolves. I understand the Timberwolves got some talent, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, but they had some injuries. They were dealing with some internal, you know, tension between Rudy Gobert and Kyle Anderson. So that was just a weird pick. Uh, Jaden McDaniels and Nas Reed were both out for the playoffs too, and people still really thought the Minnesota Timberwolves had a, a really good chance to beat and knock down the number one seeded Denver Nuggets. I thought there was no chance. I thought Nuggets would beat them in four or five. They ended up beating them in five. And then the second round comes around, and again, most people were picking the Phoenix Suns to beat the Denver Nuggets just straight up. You know, Kevin Durant, uh, Chris Paul, Devin Booker. And again, it, to me, I was like, okay, so Denver's gonna win this in six, maybe seven. That, that was kind of what I thought with Denver, that it was gonna be a six or seven game series. And Denver won it in six games. Game six was just an absolute embarrassment. They got blown off the floor. But again, that was another series that it just felt like, why are so many people picking the Phoenix Suns? That a team that has barely played together, that Kevin Durant just got there, and we've seen the playoff disappointments from this team. Now, granted, we've also seen some playoff, uh, you know, losses from the Denver Nuggets, the 2020 bubble where they lost in the conference finals, and then I think the year before they lost to the Trailblazers in the semifinals, and then we saw them last couple of years without Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr. lose uh, in the second and the first round. But to me, overall, it just felt to me the Denver Nuggets were a better team. They're a more cohesive team, and they've been playing together for longer, obviously, than the Phoenix Suns were with Kevin Durant. Uh, I know it's not all Kevin Durant's fault and all that type of stuff. He did get injured, you know, the the pregame injury where he injured his ankle was unfortunate, but that was just the case. That was just you know reality of the situation, right? So I, I was surprised so many people picked the Suns to win that series, and then Denver obviously won that game. And then, you know, I thought the Nuggets versus Lakers, I thought that series could actually go either way, but I still ended up picking the Denver Nuggets at six, and the Denver Nuggets swept them. I mean, it, I mean, they swept them, and the games were close, I guess, you know, 4-0, but close, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a pretty uh, surprising outcome, seeing them kind of get swept. I was not expecting a sweep, but, again, no shock to me that the Denver Nuggets beat the Los Angeles Lakers. Los Angeles Lakers, great season for them. And then the NBA Finals. Um, now, I think the Miami Heat are actually a really good matchup for the Denver Nuggets. Uh, the Miami Heat just don't have the size, to be honest, to really contend with Nikola Jokic. Nikola, I mean, even if you do have the size, it's so hard to guard Nikola Jokic. He can just do everything. But they didn't have the size, and to me, the only way they can I could see the Miami Heat winning was if they kept that hot streak of just three-point shooting going. To me, that was the only way I, I felt like they win. Is can they can that Max Struess can knock down threes? Can Gabe Vincent knock down his threes? Can Jimmy Butler knock down his threes when you know the couple times he needs to knock down threes? Right? He doesn't take too many threes, right? But Duncan Robinson can he knock down the threes? That's the only way I really saw this team winning because you can't guard Nikola Jokic. I didn't really think there was anyone that could take Jamal Murray, maybe Jim, Jimmy Butler. And then they're too big with Aaron Gordon, and then you have a lot of cutting to the basket with Chris uh, Christian Brown, sorry, Jeff Green, all these guys cutting to the basket, Michael Porter Jr. Just it was just too much size, I think, for Miami. And their biggest guy, really, their biggest guy that was really good was Bam Adebayo, who's six foot nine. Cody Zeller and Kevin Love, just they can't. Even though they're they're bigger than Bam, they can't guard. They can't, they can't guard uh, Nikola Jokic. You saw what happened when Cody Zeller was on Nikola Jokic. You saw what happened when Kevin Love was on Nikola Jokic. You know they're solid role players, but yeah, if if, you, if that's your, that's your that's your only really solution is Bam and those two guys, Nikola Jokic is gonna feast, and Nikola Jokic feasted all NBA Finals. I quickly want to talk about Nikola Jokic's greatness. Um, I think the reason why he really got disrespected before he won the championship, I understand. You know, 
stars have to win championships before we we treat them in that class right you know i i, I so i get that but nikola jokic was getting severely disrespected in my opinion because the fact that people thought he was the worst mvp of all time and that he didn't deserve his mvp that he was getting was just asinine now i know nikola jokic doesn't care about mvps he doesn't care about individual awards just as heck he barely cared about the final i mean you saw his face after the game after they won the finals he was just there like uh oh, you know we won great you know what i'm saying so he don't even really care right but when you watch the games you'll understand that he deserves mvp he deserved those mvps and he deserved probably i wouldn't say he deserved mvp this year I, i'll give it to uh, joel and a lot of people are discrediting joel and beat i think joel and had a great regular season so i'm not gonna take away his mvp just because of the postseason uh, failures but um i think nick leokas was 100 percent deserving of mvp those last couple of years and i think he had a good case a strong case to win mvp uh this year as well him Giannis, and joel and beat but Jokic can do everything and that is the great thing and the greatness about him is that he can do everything he is one of if not maybe the most skilled big men of all time Jokic's passing is off the charts he is probably the best big man passer of all time there's been other great big man passers obviously but i think he is the greatest probably big man passer of all time and i don't really think that's even that controversial he can make every pass in the book not even one of the greatest big man passers. he's one of the greatest passers of all time he can make every pet. He just finds the open man. Wherever the open man is, he will find. Because he is not, even though he can score at will, he's not that type of guy. He's not that type of dude where he, he wants to score 50. He can. We saw against Phoenix. He can go out there and score 50 if he really wants to. He could score 53. He did that against Phoenix. But he wants to get other teammates involved. He wants to get his team involved because he knows that's the way to win. He knows that's the great way to win. Is get everyone else involved. Make sure Aaron Gordon isn't getting involved. Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Contavious Caldwell Pope, Jeff Green, Christian Brown, Bruce Brown, everyone is getting involved, right? So he wants to do that, but he can score at will if he really wants to. His rebounding is also just amazing. The way he just tips it to himself <laughs> over and over. He could tip it one, two, three, like a volleyball or something like that. And he could just tip it to himself. He can get every single rebound, no matter who you put on him. He can just get the rebound. You know, eight and they try. Gobert, all these guys, Bam out of bio, Anthony Davis. He's just getting, I mean, these are great big men too. I'm all, maybe not eight <laughs> but uh, these are some great big men he's going against a really really good all nba all defensive team caliber players and he was just cooking them all cooking them in every single series no one could guard him whatsoever and not to mention he can score from every single facet of basketball transition he can make the transition passes when he needs to but he can score transition as well but you see the float the float game the floater game that he has the touch that he has the fadeaway game that he has he can drive to the basket he can post you up one of the best post up players if not the best post up player in the league right now he is a great post up player he can he can just he will back you down you saw how many times he backed down deandre Ayton. how many times he backed down rudy gobert and bam out of bio and just scored at will just scored at will 1v1 and if he recognizes that he's not, you know, open or whatever, he can't get a nice little float or a layup, he just passes it out to the open man. Honestly, sometimes I'm watching the NBA Finals, that's a little bit of a hindrance. It's like, sometimes I'm, I notice like he has open floaters, open shots, and he passes it out. Sometimes you want him to be more aggressive. Jamal Murray talked about it in the press conference about wanting him to be uh, more aggressive after like the NBA Finals sometimes, right? But he just makes all the great plays. And offensively, he can do everything. Post-up game's amazing, he can drive. Uh, to the basket he can score at will he can get putbacks a uh, fadeaway game foul line free throw shots he's a great free throw shooter as well he can hit open shots he's a great three-point shooter as well i mean you leave him wide open that high arcing three-point shot he's just gonna go in he can literally do everything offensively and defensively it's so over exaggerated that he's like a horrible defender he's not a horrible defender watch the games he's a solid defender he actually played really well against the miami heat the suns and, and the lakers and all that type of stuff i think minnesota too he was a decent defender is he an all nba de like defensive center no I wouldn't argue that, but to act like he's just stir fry, that he's just chopped liver defensively, I feel like it's just wrong. And he gets timely blocks and he gets timely steals as well. You saw that in the, the Miami series, the, in the Lakers, Nuggets series, all that type of stuff. So he really is just an amazing player. And, and it's just crazy to me because people try to discredit him because he had some playoff failures the last couple of years. Like, damn, did they not watch? Did they not see the starting lineups? Golden State versus the Denver Nuggets last year. Golden State had Steph and clay and draymond and jordan Poole when he was actually like really playing really good and hitting shots not the jordan Poole of this playoffs 
And then, I mean, I can look right here. Nikola Jokic had in the starting lineup Monte Morris. I mean, Will Barton, you know. I know Jeff Green and Aaron Gordon, you know. But, like, Jeff Green comes off the bench now. Aaron Gordon, he was, like, the one, like, really, really good player. You also have Austin Rivers was getting huge minutes. Uh, you know, I mean, Bones Highland and Bryn Forbes. I mean, uh, Fozzy Capazzo. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> come on. And now the two players, Jeff Green and Aaron Gordon, you know, they were here for this run as well. But, I mean, it's just you look at the team now. Jamal Murray now he has back. Michael Porter Jr. he has back. And he has you know, other contributors like Bruce Brown, you know. And Aaron Gordon's really good. He's improved. So that is just the greatness of Nikola Jokic. Yes, you need a team around you. Not everyone could be 2007 LeBron or something where you just, or 20, you know, 18 LeBron or whatever it was, when he's just carrying a bunch of just like, just a bunch of role player nobodies to the NBA Finals. Like, no, you need to have great players around you, great teammates around you. And Nikola Jokic had that this year. And you can see the greatness of Nikola Jokic. He's ready to me one of the, really a great player, probably one of the, really one of the 25 greatest players of all time. And I think he's going to get more rings. I don't know if they're going to be a dynasty per se, but I can definitely, I'll definitely see uh, Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets getting at least one or two more rings, if not more, um, uh, coming in the future. Maybe next year. I could see them definitely being repeat NBA champions. So, yeah, I mean, Nikola Jokic's greatness should not be taken for granted, please. I quickly just want to say this. I mean, he averaged 30 points, 14 rebounds, and 7 assists on 58% field goal shooting 42 percent from three 84 percent free throw shooting in the nba finals i mean this is ridiculous how many triple does he doubles did he have this postseason like 10 or something i mean it is just absolutely insane this guy is an amazing player he's top two in the league i think him and Giannis are top two in the league right now current players uh probably steph would be third in my opinion and briefly i just want to talk about um people saying the nba finals was boring or like playoffs are boring or something i don't really understand that i don't understand how this finals was boring I felt like you had competitive games. All these games were competitive. I know some of them were kind of like, you know, games three and four in particular kind of ended for like the fourth quarter, you kind of knew. But I felt like all these games really were competitive games. And uh, Miami did keep it close for a while in all these games. And obviously they also won game two. But I feel like this was just pure basketball. Like, I don't understand when people say Nikola Jokic is boring to watch. I, I really don't get it. I don't understand how people think Nikola Jokic is boring to watch at all. I feel like Nikola Jokic is amazing to watch play basketball because the way he can just literally do everything i don't understand people don't appreciate that like he can do everything he can shoot he can uh, in every facet of the way he's shooting and pass and rebound and you know d as well like i don't understand that and then watching like michael jordan uh, michael, jo <laughs> michael porter jamal murray aaron gordon and then on like miami heat side you had jimmy butler bam and, and the, the role players like gabe vincent max Struess, caleb martin duncan robinson like I'm not saying this was, like, the most entertaining finals of all time, right? But, like, I thought this was a really entertaining and just nice hoops to watch. I enjoyed watching every single game of the NBA finals. And I don't get how other people don't. I feel like a lot of NBA players, or not NBA, sorry, not NBA players, a lot of NBA fans are kind of carried by narratives. Like, if Steph's not in there, or LeBron, or, you know, KD, or something like that, one of these guys just isn't in the finals, they just kind of think it's boring. Like, I feel like a lot of people last year probably thought it was entertaining because Steph was there, right? Right, Steph was there, and then, like, Jason Tatum, Boston Celtics, big name, big brand. But it feels to me, really, like, if a big, like, market team, like LA, or Warriors, you know, or, like, Boston Celtics, one of these teams, like, isn't in the finals, you know, and it's something more like Denver market is more of a small market. I wouldn't say Miami's a small market, but like doesn't have the recognition, kind of a lot of undrafted players. I mean, Butler, you know, is their one kind of star slash superstar player. Bam out of is also there too, right? But it just feels to me a lot of people like they're carried by narratives or just the big names, like the top of the top names. Like if those guys aren't in there, just not as entertaining. Like I, I, I feel like people would say last year's finals are entertaining, but then they'd probably say the Bucks versus Suns finals wasn't as entertaining. I feel like some people would genuinely think that because really like the big names like Giannis and, and, and Devin Booker and Chris Paul. I know a lot of people did appreciate that finals. I thought that finals was really peak. I thought that was one of the best <laughs> finals of all time. Maybe because I'm a Bucks fan, so <laughs> so you know, you know, I'm a little biased. But uh, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. In all seriousness, 
I don't really understand how people say this finals are boring. I thought this was really entertaining. I love watching Jokic, Jamal Murray, and these guys, Miami's undrafted players. This was just pure hoops and just real great basketball, not just one superstar carrying, not full of narratives and this legacy on the line, you know, Martians being pointed at the earth type of crap, right? It's just like pure hoops. No legacy on the line, no narrative needed to be spinned, no, you know, like this and that type of crap. It's just, let's just watch pure hoops and see these teams go at it and see these most of these guys win their first championship on either side, right? So, and I, and I thought that was a great overall watch. And I don't need narratives in, in big names to enjoy NBA Finals. I enjoy basketball because I love watching basketball just like i like watching football as well i don't need big name narratives i don't need huge name players i just want to watch football because i love football i love sports in general so yeah this finals definitely was not boring i think you are kind of bugging a little bit if you thought this was a, a boring nba finals i'm not saying it was the most entertaining of all time but i thought it was entertaining overall finals i think denver is set up well uh, i think they're proof that you don't need to blow up everything after the first year or two right and keep course together and because mike malone has been the coach of the denver nuggets for eight years right and he just won his first nba championship so it just goes to show you that you don't need to blow up the teams and fire coaches early and trade superstars when it doesn't work sometimes you just gotta trust the process and keep it going and keep it forth and you'll get what you want and you'll get those nba um finals or nfl championship whatever it might be super bowl mlb hockey soccer all that type of stuff just trust the process and don't blow it up because it didn't work within the first two years or whatever or just rehaul the roster every single year because it didn't work you know the denver nuggets are proof that building from the inside building through the draft you know and some free agency pieces as well and just keeping at it you know and keeping the same coaches and players and building chemistry and camaraderie and love and respect in a family in a locker room can go a long way and that's all i have for today's video thank you guys for watching tuning in hope you like uh the video and if you like the video maybe leave a like maybe leave a comment tell me how you feel yeah. maybe subscribe if you feel like it as well appreciate you guys tuning in of course this is erwin signing off have a good one peace